How can design, simulation and modeling help you build your own electric car before you go out and buy the wrong components? everybody, this is Electrified Veronica. Welcome back to our Jeep conversion project. In this video, I want to give you an overview about all the simulation and design studies that we've done so far. A lot of the models will be available on my website pretty soon, so you can go ahead and use these models to make your dream car electric. For everybody of you that might be new to the channel, let me introduce to our little project here. The goal here is to make an all-electric Jeep that has as many functions as the original gas-powered Jeep and even better. Six months ago I found my personal dream car. It is the 99 Jeep Wrangler, just like the one that they have in the TV show Gilmore Girls. Right at New Year's Eve we remove the engine and all other gas-powered components. Okay. Finally. And since then we're basically working on different concepts how to make this Jeep all electric. Most of the conversion projects that you see on YouTube don't talk a lot about design and simulation but we thought it would be really exciting to show that because this is what professional automotive companies are doing to develop their cars. They certainly do lots of prototyping and physical testing but especially now there is more and more development going on in the virtual environment using simulation and modeling. What you will learn in this video is how design and simulation can help you understand first of all where do all the components go in your electric car for a conversion like this there are many many different options second understand thermal management how hot do batteries get during operations do we have to cool them do we have to heat them and third how far can you go with your converted car so what's the efficiency and the electric driving range on one charge so one of the first things we did is a so-called space claim analysis this is where you go into a cut environment like this so what we're using here is SolidWorks. You can also use Fusion 360 or some other open source CAD software. Maybe you have seen our latest video where we laid out all the high voltage components. So this is just one option and maybe not the one that we will choose in the end, but this CAD modeling and design and concept studies really gives you the opportunity to analyze what are the different options. And maybe you wanna use a different electric motor. Maybe you have different batteries, different shapes and sizes, and you just can put it all in there and understand how it would fit. So where we started, was we downloaded first a CAD model that we found online so it was really a kind of a fun and basic 3D model and this allowed us to put a lot of the components that uh, we were thinking about using into this CAD model to at least do some basic concept work. So while this is kind of a rough model, we were really lucky and happy when Hexagon came over to scan the Jeep that we have sitting in our garage. What we got out from that is a very, very accurate point cloud model that we then converted into a surface model. So a really good example of what we're talking about is trying to figure out where we're going to put the batteries inside of our Jeep. So what you see here in this tan color is actually the scanned Jeep that we got from Hexagon. And then we can see some of the components that we've laid out inside. And here, these are the battery boxes. So these are the batteries inside of a waterproof housing which will then be mounted inside of the Jeep. And in this case, we're reconfiguring the battery modules into a longer, skinnier battery module, which will require quite a bit of remanufacturing of the battery pack. We're not exactly sure if all this extra work is actually worth it. Plus, we have some concerns with some of the clearances on the bottom of the Jeep. So if we rotate this around, we can actually see that in the center section of the Jeep, it actually gets quite narrow between the frames and the drive shaft is going between these battery modules. And I'm a bit concerned about this close proximity of the drive shaft to these battery modules. So that in conjunction with having to remanufacture all of these modules into a smaller module, we're also looking into perhaps making two bigger battery modules. This will also reduce the number of cooling plates that we need. And so the idea would be is we have a bigger single battery box up front which has four of the stock battery modules inside of there with one cooling plate between all four. And then a bigger battery box back in the tank area, which will then have two larger modules, equivalent of three modules. So then we have our total of seven modules inside of the Jeep. Four in the front, three in the back, 
We also heard from some of the Jeep guys that they sort of suggested that the weight being in front of and in in behind of the rear axle is actually good for some of the rock crawling stuff that we want to do in Moab next year. So basically all that design work and space claim analysis helps you understand where your components go and if they fit before you buy them and figure out that they don't. And maybe you want to do a fuel cell electric Jeep or a hybrid and then you can also play around with all those components. Good luck with that. <laughs> One of the very special things in our project is that we are building our own battery modules. So since we're using these modules out of scrap cars, we need to be able to reconfigure them in order to get up to the voltage that we wanted. So as we discussed earlier, we needed to get up to 400 volts. Now typically this would require up to 14 or 15 of these stock modules, and we just didn't have enough space in our Jeep. So the idea that we had was we wanted to cut all of these bus bars in order to be able to reconfigure the modules in whatever size we wanted and have them to be plus minus so that we get the voltage up to what we want. So the first thing that we had to do is we had to cut all of these bus bars. So we took a cutoff wheel, we cut the bus bars between the cells, which you can see here in this battery module. And this allowed us to separate all of the cells that were in series into individual battery slices. This then allowed us to then cut the holding plate apart and then we could reconfigure the slices in order to be the configuration that we needed to get up to the 400 volts with only seven modules. So this is the first little baby module that we built from those slices. Every cell that we disassemble will be tested before we put it back into a reconfigured module. So over the next few weeks, we're gonna be building up our test system and then we can show you exactly how we're testing each one of these cells and modules before we build them into the Jeep. Now the nice thing is that we can go into the SOLIDWORKS environment again and build all sorts of different options how battery modules could look like and investigate what is the best one. So far we really looked into two options. So we mentioned before that we cannot use the stock modules because basically the electrical connection, so how the bus bars are and the cells are connected right now, would not allow us to get to the 400 volts with the amount of modules that we have. So what we need to do is reconfigure the electrical connections. So once we do this, we have two options with the size. Either we go with the stock size or maybe we, since this is all modular, we could really create all types of different lengths and, and different shapes. And yeah. now it's really about figuring out what is the best one. Once we found our optimized battery module and we're still working on that, we can go ahead and really apply a simulation to it. For example, we can charge, fast charge or discharge the battery and simulate how hot would the batteries get. And from that, we can understand how we need to cool them. Batteries have this ideal temperature window. They don't want to be too hot. They don't want to be too cold, just like a human being, basically. So if you really want to optimize performance, electric range and the lifetime of your batteries, you really want to make sure that the battery is in this optimum temperature zone. This is why people put so much effort into the thermal management, so heating and cooling of the batteries. And what we're doing for our Jeep conversion project is we will have an active liquid cooling system. So we will design cooling plates for the modules that we finally choose, which will be actively cooled with a liquid coolant, probably just a 50-50 water glycol mix, just as most of the car makers are doing. So since we really need to develop our own cooling plates, we can again go into the simulation environment and understand a little bit if our ideas are working out. Underneath each of our modules, so whatever the final design looks like, there will be a cooling plate like this one. And what we're doing here is a very fast computational fluid dynamics CFD calculations to understand if the current design of the cooling channels that you can see here would allow a good flow of the coolant. What you can also learn from these calculations is how much the flow rate should be through this cooling system and also the allowed pressure drop in order to size your electric water pump. Now what we're really interested in is how hot do the batteries get during operation and is this cooling plate or this cooling system that we want to design 
sufficient to cool down the batteries. So here, for example, you can see the 3D temperature distribution and you can really see how hot the batteries would get with this design under this certain load condition. By the way, we could also do very similar simulations to investigate how our batteries would be affected in the winter time. And then this would show that we really need to heat the batteries under certain very, very cold environmental temperatures. We'll do more and more of these simulations very soon and we'll share all of that with you in future videos. So of course the last thing that we want to talk about is a very frequent question that we get is how far are you going to be able to drive with your electric Jeep? So while you can do some basic calculations and we did that in order to try to figure out what we thought we needed for range, the more complete picture would be done in a program like Simulink where you can simulate all of the different drive profiles, the resistance of the tires, the air resistance and really try to understand what the range of the vehicle is. So what we did is we built a one-dimensional model in MATLAB Simulink, including all the vehicle dynamics and the motor and of course our battery. So what we can do then is apply real world driving scenarios to this model. In my case, I chose three different very usual scenarios for us. So I would take the Jeep from my home to go to Costco for shopping. The second drive cycle that I choose is going to the beach, to Milwaukee. And the third one is picking somebody up from the Chicago airport. So well then what you get as an output is a drop in the state of charge as you do these different drive profiles. So we can simulate, hey, can we make it all the way to Chicago O'Hare or back? Or do we have to stop somewhere in charge? And of course, also this MATLAB model will be available for you pretty soon. And then you could really go ahead and apply your own drive cycles wherever you live, including outside temperatures. You can then change battery sizes, you can change the electric motor and really see how something like this would work out for your specific application. And of course, finally, when the Jeep is finished, we want to gather some data and see how well our models predicted the actual range. This will be very exciting. Yes. Thank you so much for watching. This was our first overview of the simulation and design activities that we're doing here with our 99G Wrangler. So please stay tuned for many more videos on exactly how we're taking these modules apart, rebuilding them so that they'll fit into our Jeep, and also the testing process that we're gonna go through to make sure that all the cells that we put into our project are working correctly. So stay tuned, talk to you soon. Bye!